yeah, it kind of sucks going undrafted, but if, if you're going to go undrafted, at least you go to your hometown team. Josh Adams from the Central Bucks School District, uh, well, one of those schools. Brendan Albert is here. I am Adrian Fekiu. Ten minutes, 20 minutes from my house. Josh Adams grew up. So let's get into him. Yeah, I mean, a lot of players, too, when they start getting into, especially skill players, when you start getting into that sixth, seventh round, now all of a sudden your mind usually switches to saying, hey, let me go undrafted. I had a couple guys I worked with at IMG that in the sixth round, they straight up told me we almost want to turn our phone off because we just wanted to go undrafted so we can, can pick our spot because those sixth, seventh round guys, you know, for them, they're fighting for the roster spot. Yeah. So to them, they would rather say, hey, let's wait till we know how many teams have many quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, so we can pick the right situation for us. But you know what? For a player like him, who wouldn't want to play for not only his favorite hometown team, but also the defending Super Bowl champs? That's a great point you make because he's in a position here where not only can he make the roster, he can actually be effective in his first season because he's going to be filling the LeGarrette Blunt role, that in-between-the-tackles kind of role that LeGarrette Blunt did such a great job of last year. And this is Josh Adams' bread and butter. 100% is, Adrian. I mean, this is not only a personal favorite for him, but it's a perfect situation for him for professionally, too, to walk into. Because where he excels is what LeGarrette Blunt did. What LeGarrette, LeGarrette Blunt struggles with is also what Josh Adams struggles with. So it really is like a perfect situation. I think expectations for him are going to be very, very even. And he's not necessarily going to be LeGarrette Blunt day one, but that's exactly the role he's going to filter in at. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, this film study might not go very long because his film is very easy to digest and dissect. He's basically running in between the tackles. Notre Dame has uh, some power plays, and then they run a sweep. So th there's not much variety, too, in the offense. So we're, we're going to get into it right here. I'm just going to play like six clips back to back to back, and you're going to talk about what he does in between the tackles. His, his film is so painfully obvious, which is a good and a bad He's a tall runner, he runs with power, he falls forward and runs, and he's a physical guy. But all of his stuff is between the tackles. You're not going to see him do a lot of stuff out wide unless it's in the goal line situation. But everything we're seeing here, power run, running forward, moving forward, falling forward on point of contact, but he's very tall. He's a very tall runner. You don't see a lot of bend in his knees, and you don't really see a lot of burst in him. You know, yeah. he, If he's not running straight downhill right away and has to move laterally, it doesn't look really pretty for him. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you, you talked about the running tall thing. 6'2". So, so normally you see these guys, that they're, they're like 5'10", 5'11". A lot of these power backs, well, he's 6'2". So yeah. what, what kind of a difference does that make being a couple inches taller? It makes a big difference because, you know, like Sony Michelle, for example, yeah, he could run tall, but he's running tall at 5'10", 5'11". You know, so that three inches, it, it help, hurts you with your leverage and hurts you with your pad level, obviously. And in pad level and leverage, that really hurts you when you start going up against linebackers that aren't NC State. They're the New York Giants and Washington Redskins and NFL level linebackers. So when you get to the league, if you run that tall, you're not necessarily going to be able to fall forward like they did consistently playing some of those ACC schools. Yeah. All right. So now we'll kind of dissect some things a, a little bit further. There, there's a, a clip here coming up. Oh, here it is right here. You can see he gets skinny through the hole for, for a touchdown. So the big man getting skinny. How about that? He can do it. I mean, down the red zone, you know, he's, he's that guy like Mike Tolbert or TJ Duckett back in the day, those guys that would vulture your fantasy TDs. I, I unfortunately think Josh Adams is one of those guys who could be a vulture TD guy in, in fantasy football. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can see that as well. All right, so we talked about his in-between-the-tackle kind of running. Uh, he gets ahead of steam moving forward. But as you can see here, when he's trying to jump cut, uh, it's not Ronald Jones out there. He's losing acceleration. Big time. You know, he reminds me a lot of, like, that old lawnmower maybe you had back in the day, Adrian, that you had to rem it, like, 15 times before it actually would start. And then it finally would start, and then it would stop, and then you had to pull it again. It's very similar. It takes a while for him to get going. But when he gets moving downhill – He's a freight train. But, again, this is a, there's a reason he was undrafted. It's because he's a one-trick pony. He's very good at what he does. But the reason he was undrafted is because he doesn't catch the ball out of the backfield, doesn't have great burst, plays with a very high pad level. These are all reasons you go undrafted. But you go to a situation where you're running back by committee and you're just asked to be the power back, 
It's a perfect situation for the Eagles and for Josh Adams. Yeah, he's not asked to be a three-down back in Philly. I mean, this this is literally the, the best situation that he could have put himself in. And, and the next thing we're going to get into, Notre Dame, great offensive line. I mean, look, look at this hole right here, for example. Uh, th- this, this is uh, something that he's going to have favor for him in, in Philadelphia, too. Great offensive line is going to allow him to get that head of steam going forward. So with those great offensive lines, he's not going to be asked to make people miss in the backfield. 100% right, Adrian. I mean, when you look at that Notre Dame offensive line, two players, you know, are, are, are first-round picks this past year, and their offensive line coach went to the NFL as well. So you're getting an elite-level offensive line in front of them. So if you want to kind of ding him, you could say, look, he's getting these massive running games, and they're playing teams like NC State, very good defensive line, North Carolina, eh, okay. He's not exactly playing the SEC week in and week out. You know, he's also getting, you know, Navy and Army and Air Force and those type of programs, too, in the independent schedule. The one thing I will give him, when he is running away, he is running away. He clocked something like 20-plus miles an hour. I think it was on this run, actually, here. So if he gets a full head of steam, you're not going to catch him. But the problem is it takes him a very long time to get started. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he ran like 449 at the 40. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to tell in these clips. Maybe, maybe you'll see it right here. Like, by the time he finally gets going, it, it, it takes him a couple, uh, 10 to 20 yards or so. But once he's on the loose, I mean, you can see he's outrunning safeties. So there, there's that. But, um, you know, hey, th- this is a perfect situation for him. Again, I mean, you can't stress it enough uh, because it, there, there's a lot of situations where, you know, there, there were some clips where he did get into the second level and he couldn't make that jump cut to finish the run. Um, but if the offensive line is so good and, and getting him these huge creases like this, he can outrun a safety or some secondary players. 100% right, Adrian. That's the difference between a 40 guy like Josh Adams and a three cone and a 5'10", 5 shuttle like Ronald Jones and Sony Michelle. Mm. It's the burst versus straight line speed. Straight line speed, that's the 40-yard dash all day long. But very rarely are NFL running backs truly running straight without having to make any lateral movement. So yeah. there's a reason that Josh Adams didn't do any of those type of testings at the NFL Combine. Do what you're great at. He just did the bench rep, right? So then he goes to Notre Dame's Pro Day, and then he does all of his testing. Didn't do the 40 at the NFL Combine. Didn't do any of the shuttles at the Combine because the shuttles definitely would have hurt his stock. But at the same time, he went undrafted. Can't hurt his stock anymore in the long run. So hindsight's yeah. 2020, I suppose, here. <laughs> So there it is. Uh, th- there's Josh Adams. I mean, I- again, like th- there wasn't really much uh, tape to dissect there because you're basically seeing the same thing over and over and over again. A lot of in between the tackle running. He finishes his runs, balance pad level. He gets low, he, you know, stuff like that to turn those legs moving forward. So that's what you're going to get. Josh Adams is going to fill the Garrett Blount role. To pull the Denny Green, he is who we thought he is. You know, we'll be switching a little they and is, but he's 100% that. If you want him to be your third down, short yardage, goal line back, awesome signing. If you're expecting him to be a guy to catch the ball out of the backfield and carry the ball 25 times and run an outside zone scheme, he's not your cup of tea. So for him replacing with Garrett Blunt, boom, done. Great job. Let's keep it moving. Yeah. He's not a beast, but he can be a beast in those third down situations. Absolutely. There's a way to put it. All right, that's Brett Albert. I'm Adrian Fedhugh. That's Josh Adams. Take care. Appreciate it, guys.